chapter 3 is the beginning of the FEM method. So we start uh, our FEM class with simple problem which is 1D problem. In this chapter, we wish to use FEM to solve this kind of problem which is 1D bar applied by loads and then having displacement in one direction only either in X or in Y. Okay, for example, in this case, in X direction and sometimes also can be in Y direction. Okay, here is the solution step. How to solve uh, the problem by using the FEM methods. The first step is to discretize or subdivide the body by creating the nodes and elements. Okay, so then once we have the nodes and elements, and of course, we have to identify the element connectivity. For example, the element is connected using which nodes. Okay. And number three is to identify number of degree of freedom, meaning that the number of unknowns in our problem that we want to solve. Number four is to obtain the stiffness metric for each element. Okay. And then once we have the stiffness metric for each element, then we can assemble into global system metric for the whole structure okay uh, the next step is to identify the applied loads in our system either it's a point load either it's a um, traction load or body force okay once we have the force once we have the stiffness metric then we can write our system linear equation f equal to ku and then applying the bondy condition okay and then the, the next step is to solve the unknown for example for bar problems we want to solve for displacement if for heat transfer problem we want to solve for temperature next after we have obtained the, the displacement for example then we can evaluate the stress strain the reaction at support and etc and finally, of course, to interpret the result, meaning that is to check either our answer is logic or not, makes sense or not. Okay, imagine if your bar has been loaded with positive load in x direction, but in your calculation, in your step, you obtain your displacement negative, opposite direction, which is not logic at all. Right, that, that's another uh, that type of question that you need to ask yourself at the end of your solution. Is it my answer makes sense or not? Okay, the first step is to discretize the body or to create the nodes and element. Imagine we have this kind of problem, bar problem, where both ends are fixed joint. Okay, and we have two different size of bar. Bar, let's say bar A and bar B. Number B. So, how to create the notes? So, the best way to create the notes, if you see something happen to the structure, then you create the notes at that point. For example, in this case, we create note 1 at this point because here is the beginning of the structure. Okay, the beginning of the structure all right and then next step we see that between this point we don't have nothing happen so we don't need to create nodes but then we see that here we have an applied loads so something happened to the structure so in this case we have to create a new nodes node 2 at that point after that move again nothing happened so no need to create nodes and then here we see that something happened to the structure the change of size or the change of area cross sectional area and so on or the change of material and so on so we have to create another nodes okay to take into account the changes of size and then move along the bar we move and then we see that here at this point we have another point load acting on the structure so we have to create another nodes which is not 4 and then move along until the end so we come to the end then of course we have to create 
another note to show that that is the end of the structure. So basically, in this case, we have five nodes. Okay, if I arrange like this, we have five nodes, and then once we have the nodes, then we can connect this node. For example, between node one and node two, we can create element one. Okay, by using line element. Okay, and then between node two and node three, we have element two. And between element three and element four, sorry, between node three and node four, we have element three. And then between node four and node five, we have element four. So basically, in this case, we're going to have five nodes and three elements. The second step to, is to identify the element connectivity. Meaning that from here, you also know by looking at this uh, figure, you already know that element one is connected by using node 1 and node 2. So step 2 is just an optional for you. Either you want to, uh, it's not necessary to include in your solution. But it's good to, to have it for you, for you to check later on. Okay. For bar problem, it's very simple because the nodes is, continu uh, is continuity. It is continuation from one to another. It's very easy. But later on, when you try to solve for trusses, the node will be scattered. Okay, that's why it's very important to, to know, uh, to make sure the connectivity, which node to which node. Okay, here's some example I prov provide in the table. Okay. Step 3 is to identify number degree of freedoms or the unknowns in our system. Okay. So, back to our uh, structure just now, we know that at node 1, at node 1, we have a fixed join. So, when we have a fixed join, meaning that node 1 cannot move, is stuck, has been held by this structure. So, in other way, in other uh, words, okay, u1 is equal to 0. So, note that we always use displacement in x direction as u, displacement in y direction as v, the notations, okay, u and v to represent x and y. So in this case, again, at first note, we have fixed join, meaning that u1 equal to 0, displacement will equal to 0. And we know that when we have a fixed join, meaning that we also have a reaction force. Okay, so F1 equal to reaction force 1. At not 2, at this point, it's a free. Meaning that not 2 is free to move. Okay, either you want to move in X, uh, positive X or negative X. So meaning that not 2, we will be going to have unknowns, the displacement. We don't know. Because it's free to move. Same thing for not 3. Okay, not three also free to move. Okay, either you want to move in x direction or negative x direction. So, but it's free to move. We, so we don't know what is the the value of the displacement at not three. The our second unknowns. Point number four, same thing. Okay, the node are free to move within the bar. Okay, it can move either in x or in y. That uh, in negative x directions. So number four also unknowns because it's free to move. While number five, now again, here we have a fixed joint, meaning that the, this node has fixed to the wall. So in other words, u5 is equal to zero. We won't have displacement at node five. Okay? And not also the the forces. At node two we have applied load. 10 kN. So we have F2 equal to 10 kN. At node 3, they have no loads applied as well as they have no support reaction, joints and etc. So that we don't have any loads. So F3 equal to 0. At node 4, we have applied loads, 5 kN. So we have negative 5 kN. At node 5, Again, it's a fixed joint. When we have a fixed joint or fixed support, of course, we're going to have a reaction. So at node 5, we have 
reaction force. I call it RF5. So, in this case, we have three unknowns, meaning that we have number of degree of freedom is three. Here, the stiffness metric for each element. Okay, the next step, step number four. So, back to our concept. Okay, according to Hooke's law, for example, when we have a spring like this, okay, and then we apply with force, of course, the spring will have some displacement. He will replace like say for example x that value the displacement so we can uh, define that f is equal to k x or f equal to ku okay where k basically is the spring stiffness which it depends on the size of the spring which is a the material used to fabricate or to build the spring which is E here, the material properties, and the length of the spring. So basically, the stiffness uh, uh, spring or the stiffness of the structure is depending on the material properties, the size, as well as the length. Similarly, okay, if you transform, imagine this spring in our bar. So, when you apply a load in bar, okay, for example, in this case, of course, the bar also will have elongation, will have some displacement, which let's say U. The displacement in bar is U. So, similarly, we can say that in bar, the F also equal to KU. Okay, F equal to KU, where it's depending on the material properties the size okay as well as the length before we can um, define the stiffness metric we have first define the element displacement imagine in one element we have not one okay and not two u1 and not one and not two at not one we have u1 displacement and not two we have u2 displacement and along the elements, okay, you also have ux. Okay, so this ux is not known. Alright, to simplify the problem, it is assume that the displacement varies linearly from node 1 to node 2, meaning that it will increase linearly, okay, the displacement, okay, from u1 to u2 and we can represent this uh, linear increase of displacement by using the linear equations y equal to mx plus c for example in this case the y is our displacement so that's why we have ux equal to mx plus c if i plot into cartesian graph to represent this fi this uh, figure at x1 we have u1 so x1 at this point we have a u1 and x2 okay which is equal to l we have u2 okay and it's higher than u1 linearly okay by approximation is increased linearly so here we have the slope which is the m okay so in order to solve for the linear equation for our displacement, we have to solve the M first. So by using the equation of M, I believe of you have known the equation for slope, eh? which is the y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And in this case, we know that y2 is u2 and y1 is u1. Okay, so replacing to the equations, then we obtain this equation. Okay, and note that x2 minus x1 is basically is the length of the elements. Okay, here is the length of the elements. So that's why we can represent x2 minus x1 with L. Next, we replace this M into our equations so that we have this equation. 
and then we still have one unknown which is C that need to be solved. In order to solve this C, just replace, take one point from this graph, for example, let's say point 1, where x equal to x1, u equal to u1. Okay, so we can replace here x equal to x1, and we know that x1 is equal to 0 because it's the beginning of the element. Okay, the beginning of the element, of course, x equal to 0, and ux at this point, at node 1, u equal to u1. Okay, when we replace, then we obtain, okay, u1 here. So here our m multiply with 0, we equal to 0, and c. So, c is equal to u1. Then we obtain our general equation for element displacement. Okay, or we can rearrange. Okay, we can have this equation. Okay, where here we have the cons uh, one value that we can represent with n1 and n2. This n1 and n2 is called the shape function, meaning that when when uh, when you have when you solve uh, x1 and u2 okay then we can determine the displacement along the element for example you want to solve one element at this point so by knowing the x value or the distance okay you replace into this equation and provided you already solve the u1 and u2 then you can solve the displacement at any point within the element Okay, element strain. Okay, so element strain by theory is defined as du over dx. The differentiate the, the differentiation in uh, displacement divided by the differentiation in length. Okay, so du over dx, and then we already defined our ux. Okay, ux given the, by this equation, and then we can differentiate according to du over dx. So by differentiate, we know this value will become 0, this value equal to 1, this value equal to 1. Then we will obtain the strain given by this equation. Negative u1 divided by L plus u2 divided by L. Or we can simplify into matrix form, it will look like this. Okay? 1 over L, we can factorize it, and then negative 1 times U1, 1 times U2. Okay, uh, and to make it, uh, we can make it this one in the into a short uh, equation. We call it strain is equal to B times U, where matrix B is this constant value. Okay, this is the constant value, B. Once we solve for the strain, we also can solve for stress. Okay, from the Hooke's law, we know that the modulus yang is equal to stress divided by strain. Okay, where we can rearrange so that we can obtain the stress. Stress is equal to E times strain. So, meaning that in order to obtain the stress, we just need to multiply with modulus yang. Okay, so this equation, the strain, okay, just multiply with A. So that you get this equation. Okay, again, we can simplify into a short form. E times B times U. Okay, where this part is the the strain. Okay, so E times strain. Okay, element internal energy. Okay, so we will use the potential energy approach to derive the element stiffness metric K for 1D element. So the total potential energy of a body subjected load is given by internal energy, internal strain energy 
plus with a potential energy of external forces where given by this equation this is the internal energy okay this is external forces due to um, body force this is due to traction force this is due to point load where we will discuss about this uh, load type of loading in the next lecture All right so basically the strain internal strain is this equation All right so we have the element internal strain energy so we're going to use this internal strain energy to define the matrix k Okay, we have defined the stress and strain. Now we want to define the stiffness metric for each element. From the internal strain energy, we have this equation. And remember, the, st the stress and strain we have defined before. So here is the uh, parameter for stress strain. Okay, so by using this information, okay, this equation, we replace into this equation. So that we're going to have the internal uh, in strain energy okay will be like this and remember when we have the the matrices inside bracket okay with transpose remember in chapter 2 we have discussed about this okay so when you have this kind of uh, problem okay matrices inside bracket with transpose we have to swap the matrix okay you have to swap because instead of A, B, C, now become C, P, A. The same thing applied in this equation. So that's why we have U, B, E. Instead, instead of E, B, U. Okay? And we try to define E transpose is equal to E. Because it's a constant value. Only one value. Okay? So transpose will become the same thing. Alright? And then we try to factorize. All those constant we put uh, 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 in front of the integration okay so in this case the one that need to integrate only the dx here okay in function of x so by integrate this value okay we will obtain l okay we integrate from 0 to l because in one bar the length is from 0 to to l that's why you obtain L here. Okay, and then we replace back into the equation. And then we replace the B here with this equation. We insert into this equation. So the first one is B transpose. So 1 over L is not affected by this one. The row has become column. Okay, instead of row, when you transpose, it changed into column. And then times B, another B here. Okay, without changing anything. So we have this equation. Times U, times L. Okay. And then we try to uh, cancel the same um, parameter. Okay. To simplify the equations. And then if we try to solve this multiplication here we have 2 times 1 and then this size is 1 times 2 always row times column so by solving this one okay it's possible to solve and the size will be 2 times 2 that's why we obtain this value so negative 1 times negative 1 we have 1 negative 1 times 1 we have negative 1 here and then 1 times negative 1 negative 1 1 times 1 equal to 1 okay so replace into the equations okay and then rearrange the equation here ae over l so ae over l and here is the product of this multiplication times u okay and then remember when the force applied on the bar, once the displacement is increased, okay, the force also increase linearly. Okay, the force is increased linearly, and we know that the area under the graph, okay, 
represent by this blue uh, color okay the area under this graph is the internal strain energy okay according to Hooke's law so the area under this graph basically the area of triangle the triangle the, the formula is half time base time height which is half time okay, F which is the H and the base which is the U so we can we have obtained half F times U but F we know that F is K U okay F equal to K K U so we replace back into this equation then we ob obtain the internal energy is equal to half K U square or we can rewrite like this okay half u times k u okay and if we compare between this equation and this equation so we have half here we have u here and another u here meaning to say the middle part here is k okay is the k so we can define that k is a e over L 1 negative 1 1 negative 1 1 okay so a e meaning that a for that element e for that particular element and length for that particular element it's not for the whole structure it's for element 